limited supply. The ticking clock. If we don't get out of here in 60 seconds, the whole place is gonna blow. A classic staple of fictional dramas, TikTok, TV offers, beloved game shows, and this very video. What's it gonna be? Designed to raise stakes and keep our excitement levels high. I don't know. TikTok Amber. But there's another common use for this device you may want to watch out for in the world of the scam. You've probably witnessed it. An email asking you to act now. A robocall urging you to respond immediately. So why do so many scammers use the tactic of the ticking clock? And how does it affect our ability to think? It's 4 p.m. on a Friday, late in November. Marjorie is tackling her daily Sudoku when she receives a phone call. Expecting her grandson, she's surprised to find a man from the gas company. It seems Marjorie has missed her latest payment and is in danger of having her heating shut off before the frosty weekend. Oh dear. Urging her not to worry, the man offers to fast-track her payment with a few digital payment options. Or she can simply provide her credit card information and social security number. Thankful for the assistance, Marjorie gives him her info, before hanging up the phone, comforted that she will remain warm in the days to come. In 2019, studies found that participants asked to make quicker responses to fraudulent offers made more judgment errors, suggesting that the visceral trigger of a ticking clock may reduce our ability to effectively judge a message's authenticity. These types of interactions are designed to cloud our immediate judgment, pushing our way of thinking from a more centralized form of information processing to a peripheral one. Simply put, the reason why so many scams and fraud incidents make use of a ticking clock is because it works. Marketers know this effect well, with some studies showing that the simple introduction of a countdown timer can increase sales of a product by as much as 9%. While it may seem obvious, the perceived urgency that these clocks create can push many of us to make more impulsive decisions. Avid gamer Tom is hard at work. He's been scouring the internet for the highly sought after new console, which is still scarce despite being on the market for almost a year. Just as he gives up hope, Tom is stopped by a surprise personal listing on a social media site. The user got lucky and found two consoles, so he's selling the second without a huge markup. Nice find. The price is too appealing to ignore, and the vendor has a high review rating. Unwilling to lose out again, Tom springs at the opportunity. The sale goes through and Tom falls back into his chair, giddy in anticipation for his new purchase. So what exactly is happening in these moments? A 2016 study stated that decision makers must often balance the desire to accumulate information with the costs of protracted deliberation. In other words, whenever faced with a time-sensitive decision, we enter a sort of trade-off between the perceived truth of the information we have already gathered and the time left over to make our choices. There is a natural bias that we all have called a loss aversion bias. We are more inclined to weight heavily on things where we lose the opportunity, we lose something. So if we win $20, that's wonderful, that's great, but we weigh it less than if we lost $20. It's called social engineering. They're really getting at trying to trick us into making the easy decision they want us to make. By limiting the amount of time with which we have to make a decision, these interactions don't only cloud our judgment, they also challenge our desire to avoid a lost opportunity, our fear of missing out, so to speak. Mike has lost track of the time he has spent indoors. His previous holiday plans were cancelled, his surf lessons put on hold. But suddenly, an opportunity, an exciting prospect, a once-in-a-lifetime trip to an exotic locale presents itself. The images are captivating, the waves beckon him from afar. The seller has a work conflict and can no longer travel or return the hotel reservation. But there's another buyer, so time is scarce. Mike's partner is asleep, he dare not wake them. Perhaps this will be a nice surprise. He bites and buys the hotel voucher before it disappears. Mike rests his head on his pillow, dreaming of the adventures to come. So if we are all inherently susceptible to the ticking clock, what can we do to protect ourselves? If you suspect you're being scammed, the first thing you can do is slow down. Take a moment to step back and ask, is there a way you can confirm this information other than the person you were talking to right at the moment? If they called you on the phone, then hang up and call back the company through a known good number. 
So slow it down, step it back, and think through things. Don't let them pressure you into reacting too fast. Slowing down is a great way to avoid being scammed. Time's up, Amber. What's it going to be? I think I'm going to take a moment to think about it. That's smart, I guess. But whether you're making a purchase or using a platform like Zelle, the best way to avoid a scam is to only send money to those you know and trust. 